Okay, so I'm going to read this out because it is just too much to write down and I can't access it while I'm filming. So, clues to the meaning of the liar. Mercury found, it just went beep beep. <laughs> Mercury found the body of a tortoise cast up by the Nile and discovered that by striking the sinews, which is also significant, after the flesh was consumed, a musical note was obtained. He made a lyre of similar shape having three strings and gave it to Orpheus, the son of Calliope, who by its music enchanted the beasts, birds, and rocks. After Orpheus was slain by the Thracian woman, Jupiter placed the lyre in heaven at the request of Apollo and the Muses. This constellation was often called Vulture Cadence or the Falling Gripe by the Ancients. This musical instrument, the lyre of Orpheus, is a testimony to the love and longing felt by Orpheus for his wife, Eurydice, who died from the bite of a poisonous snake. Yes, and that goes into a whole thing that I'll talk about later, but I wanted to get to this part where it's talking about the tortoise because I haven't heard of this part yet. So Lyra represents the lyre, an ancient stringed musical instrument. Lyra has titles identifying it with a variety of stringed instruments, and some of these names might be due to a lack of knowledge of what a lyre was. That there was a difference between the lyre and the cathara is certain, Hermes invented the lyre, and Apollo invented the cathara, which the zither and guitar are related to this word. The lyre and cellus, on the other hand, and the cathara and forminx, on the other, were similar or nearly identical. Aratos, called lyre kolosulig, <laughs> I cannot pronounce that, kolosulig, the little tortoise or shell, Greek kolos, is equivalent to the Latin word cellus, a league from Greek oligos, meaning little. The cellus or lyre is a stringed musical instrument which had a vaulted back of a tortoise shell or of wood shaped like that shell. The word sizels was used in allusion to the oldest lyre of the Greeks, which was said to have been invented by Hermes. According to tradition, he was attracted by sounds of music while walking on the banks of the Nile and found they proceeded from the shell of a tortoise across which were stretched tendons which the wing had set in vibration. Homeric hymn to Hermes 475.1. Posnias says that it was in Caledoria, rich in tortoises, adjoining Mount Kylene in Arcadia, which is another synchronicity, that Hermes is said to have found a tortoise and made the lyre. All living turtles belong to the crown group Chelonia. This generic name was derived from Greek chelis, tortoise, meaning chelis. When the wedding of Zeus and Hera took place, Hermes invited not only the gods, but also the humans and even the animals to attend. Chelone was the only person who stayed at home. Hermes noticed that she was not there. He came down to earth, took hold of the house with the girl inside of it, and cast them both into a river. Chelone was changed into a tortoise, which, like her, is inseparable from his house. And another version here is, oh my god, Orphic Egg. Okay, this is huge. Okay, hold on. Another version, Zeus asked the tortoise, Cologne, her reason for not having come to the feast. And the tortoise said, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. <gasps> oh my God. Okay, we got, this, we got the Oz reference here that I was getting from Google. You guys, I'm, I'm shaking. Okay. Zeus got angry at the tortoise and ordered her to carry her house with her wherever she went. That's accordance to the Aesop fables. And the word shalom is a siege. The word shalom is a siege performed with shields united so as to resemble the shell of a tortoise, the same as Latin testudo from Greek kilon, which means tortoise, from Greek kilos, which also means tortoise, literally the yellow animal. Oh, this is huge as well. Related to Greek klus, greenish yellow color, and cognate with Old Slavonic zeli from Indo-European base gel, which means yellow or klein. Derivatives of gel, yellow, green, chloro, chlorite, chlorine, chlorophyll, gall, cholesterol, coal, bile, melancholy. And the yolk of an egg is also a cognate. The Orphic egg. 
Note the cognate of Chalone, the yolk of an egg, the Orphic egg, an egg with a snake wound around it from bottom to top, is the ancient and foremost symbol of the Orphic mysteries, which were named after Orpheus, a legendary singer in Greek myth. The word egg may be Aquila, and the various components of this mysterious egg and snake would involve a number of constellations. Melancholy is described as black bile, a term that could describe Orpheus's grief and sadness over the death of his wife Eurydice. Testudo, a shell tortoise, as covered. Testa, with a shell, also a shell crust covering. A lyre, for the first lyre, was said to have been made of straining strings over the shell of a tortoise. The Greeks used chelis in the same way. Testudo is said also of the shells of soldiers held so as to form a shell or covering and making an attack. The Greek cologne, also like kilone, a machine used in sieges to cover soldiers while sapping or making breaches, also an arched or vaulted roof as resembling a shell. That's in accordance to an etymology dictionary of the Latin language Valpi, 1828, page 472. Oh my gosh, there's so much here, you guys. I gotta continue reading. Are you guys excited? Because I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited because I've been getting the message about the turtle. Janet has as well. And the message about the egg is huge. And with it setting or rising in the east, setting in the west, the pyramids facing the east, the, the woman looking out the window towards the east in the king's daughter, which is all about mermaids. Again, sirens referring to Lyra. Okay. So it's all coinciding here. And with Ishtar as well and Astarte and Easter and the Easter egg. See how it's all connecting here? So the liar, like Easter, get it? Okay, Easter, okay. The liar has architectural associations in mythology. In the hands of Amphion, the city of Thebes was built with the music of his lyre. The tones of Amphion's lyre built the wall of Thebes. <sighs> Janet, the magic of his music caused the stones to move into place on their own accord. And I just saw a video about this in accordance, sorry, my dog is licking the couch. It's a video on Gaia talking about how they lifted rocks and did it with vibrations of sound. The testidines, we were talking about like water, vibration, frequency, music, and the music came through today. I was talking with another friend who sends me music and it's been a form of communication through my Arcturian guides as well. The frequency is huge. The water is huge. Okay. The Testidines or Chelonians carry their homes on their back. Architectural skills are needed to build these homes, just like the tortoise. According to the Aberdeen Bestiary, the tortoise Testudo is so called because it is covered by the vault, the vault of its shell, the vault, the firmament, the dome. Guys, there's a lot here. In the manner of an arched roof. The lyre was also used to lull to sleep. Orpheus used his lyre to lull Cerebrus to sleep. Cerebrus? Sounds like cerebral. And Hermes used his lyre to lull Argus to sleep. Argus, Argos? Okay. The lyre was used in the sense of lull to produce calm intervals. When Orpheus strummed his lyre on a visit to the underworld, there was a lull in normal activities. There, as they listened to the music, everyone stopped their jobs. Cerebrus stopped growling. Sisyphus sat upon his stone instead of continually rolling it up a hill. Lixion's wheel stopped, and Tetanus ignored the receding wave. Related words are lullaby lull to lounge idly, lull up to move with a bobbing motion, lullard, lullardly, were religious reformers in England followed of John Wycliffe in the 14th and 15th centuries. Didn't I see something recently about Wycliffe? John. Um, the girls' names Lalage and Eulalia of Greek origin from G.K. Lalage, Babel and Prattle. Plutarch would be referring to what we call the lullaby here when he says, like the notes of the lyre, which the Pythagoreans used before sleep to charm and heal the emotive and irrational part of the soul. The word lyre from Greek lyra is etymology related to the word lyric from Greek lyrikos pertaining to or singing to the lyre. Erato is the muse of lyric poetry and meme, mime. Nature might provide an understanding of this connection between mime, mimic, lyric, and lyre. The lyre bird. 
of the Australian bush has a tail shaped like a lyre. They are ground-dwelling Australian birds most notable for their extraordinary ability to mimic natural and artificial sounds from their environment. Chainsaws, car engines, alarms, rifle shots, camera shutters, barking dogs, and crying babies. Liar birds are shy birds, and a constant stream of bird calls coming from one place is often the only way of identifying them and their presence. Sirens, alarms, here, see how it's all connecting? And their tails do look just like the harp, like the lyre. And this is crazy because I was getting tons of messages about Australia and Brisbane as well. And if we think about the vault that's in Brisbane and the vault of the back of the tortoise is what they refer to it as. It's very intriguing, is it not? Um, so let's see. David Attenborough explains in this YouTube video that not only has a lyre bird got its tail shaped like a lyre, but it is a lyre like lying, in the same sense that it mimics everything around them. So like it lies by just mimicking everything. And you think you can hear a kookaburro or all kinds of wrens, but it is actually that one liar birds that's doing it. The word lie comes from the Indo-European root leoch, to tell a lie. Derivatives warlock from Old English leogen, to lie from Germanic leogen, belly from Old English biologian, to deceive, be about, see, empire from Germanic lugen, lie from Old English lige, a lie, falsehood from Germanic lugies. So these are like the etymologies of the words, but like really like it's connecting everything so the liar lyra is so called from the word lyren to speak frivolously that is from variety of voices see siren variety of voices because it renders diverse sounds and they say that the lyre was first invented by mercury in the following way when the nile was receding into its channels it left behind various animals on the plains and a tortoise was one that was stranded and when it decomposed and its tendons remained stretched out in the shell it made a sound when mercury plucked it and mercury made a lyre of the shape and handed it over to orpheus who was by far its most zealous student once it is thought that by by his art, he controlled not only wild beasts, but also the rocks and the woods by the modulation of his song. On account of his love of musical pursuits and praise of song, musicians have imagined in the fictions of their tales his lyre as being located among the stars. There's uh, the etymology of Isidore Seville, 7th century AD, page 98. And the tortoise testudo is also called because its back is covered over with a shell testa in the manner of a vaulted roof. There are four kinds of tortoises, land turtles, sea turtles, mud turtles, that is those living in mud and swamps. And the fourth kind are the river turtles, which live in fresh water. Some people say, and this is unbelievable, that ships go more slowly when they carry the right foot of a turtle. And that's the etymologies of Isidore Seville again, page 262. And a tortoise shell, to a lit tortoise shell, is a transverse vault of a temple. Oh my God. And I was just reading about the temple with the vault in it in India, referring to the Naga knots, the Nagas, and how they show different knots. And there's one on a front of a vault in this temple that no one's allowed to see, film, or even access anymore. So this is really interesting. For the ancients would make the roofs of their temple, for the ancients would make the roofs of their temples in the shape of a tortoise shell. They these would be made thus to duplicate the image of the sky, which is evidently convex. And that's again according to Seville, page three twelve. And the constellation was often called Volter Cadens, or the falling gripe by the ancients on star maps. An eagle and vulture often depicting together with the lyre in front of the vulture. I think the vulture might just represent the plectrum, the plucker of the lyre strings. And the English word vulture comes from the Latin vulture, which in turn may be derived from valir, which means to pluck or to tear, describing how these birds remove bits of flesh from carrion. And another moving love story associated with this constellation 
constellation. Another moving love story associated with this constellation tells how Zeus went on to the house of Periphus and came upon him when he was making love to his wife, Fiend. He pressed both hands on him and turned him into a bird, an eagle, Aquila. His wife asked Zeus to turn her into a bird too, so that she would be a companion for Periphus. So he turned her into a vulture, and Zeus made Periphus king of all birds to the wife of Periphus, whom he had turned into a vulture. He granted the privilege of being a sign of good omen in all the affairs of mankind. The bird Periphus received a place amongst the stars as the constellation Aquila. Its consort was Lyra, the heavenly vulture. Wow. Manlius giving the astrological influences of the constellation Lyra. And one may see among the stars the lyre, its arms spread apart in heaven, with which in time gone by Orpheus charmed all that his music reached, making his way even to the ghosts of the dead and causing the decrees of hell to yield to his song. Wherever it Wherefore it was honored in heaven and power to match its origin. Then it drew in its train forests and rocks. Now it leads the stars after it and makes off with the vast orb of the revolving sky. And that's from Manilius, Astronomonica, 1st century AD, book 1, page 30. Next, with the rising of the lyre, there floats forth from ocean the shape of tortoise shell to studenus, which under the finger of its ear Mercury gave forth sound only after death once it once with it did once with it did Orpheus, Oegris's son, impart sleep to waves, feeling to rocks, hearing to trees, tears to Pluto, and finally a limit to death. Hence will come endowments of song and tuneful strings, hence pipes of different shapes with shapes with prattle melodiously, and whatever is moved to utterance by touch of by touch or hand or force or breath, the child of the lyre will sing beguiling songs at the banquet, his voice adding mellowness to the wine and holding the night in thrall. Indeed, even when harassed by cares, he will rehearse some secret strain, turning his voice to a stealthy hum left to himself. He will ever burst into song, which he can charm no ears but his own. And such are the ordinances of the lyre, which at the rising of Libra's 26th degree will direct its prongs to the stars. We have prongs again, Janet. Tongs, prongs. Manilis, Book 5, Astronomica, 1st Century AD, page 327. Constellation from Star Names, 1889, Richard H. Allen, Orion's Harp Fin, Chaucer's House of Fame. Lyra, the lyre or harp, is the lyre of Germany, Lyra of Italy, and Lyre of France, and anciently represented the fabled instrument invented by Hermes and given to his half-brother Apollo, who in turn transferred it to his son Orpheus, the musician of the Argonauts, of whom Shakespeare wrote, page 281, everything that heard him play, even the billows of the sea, hung their heads and then by lay, while Manilus said that it's Service in its last owner's hands in the release of Eurydice from Hades gained it heaven and still its force appears, as then the rocks it now draws on the stars. From its ownership by these divinities came various adjectival titles, Ermia, Erme, E-R-M-A-I-E, and Kulinai, referring to Hermes and his birthplace, Mount Kylene or Silenia, Cicero's Clarifids, Silenia, and Mercurialis that Varro also used, and the Cathara or Lyra, Apollonis. Apollonis! Janet, Apollonis. Okay, so you guys, I channeled the other night, I channeled the name Apollonis and Ardenus. And Ardenus refers back to Jesus, and Apollonis refers back to pulling the apple out of the garden and getting caught and then shamed for it by turning into a raccoon. So let me read this again. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ermai and Kulinai, referring to Hermes and birthplace, um, Mercurialis that Varro also used and the Cathara or Lyra, Apollonis, Orphi, Orphica, and Mercury. It also was Lyra, Aron. Lyra Arionis and Amphionis 
from those skillful players, Amphiona sounds like amphibian, does it not? Which would be turtle. So from those skillful players, but usually it was plain Lyra and later on Cathara, Fides, the fittest of Columella, who with Pliny also used Fidicula, Decacordum, and Tympanum. In this same connection, we see Fidicin, the Lyrist, Deferns, Saltirium, and Canticum, a song. The occasional early title, Aqua, Aquilaris, Aquilaris, sounds like Aquarius, doesn't it? Was often, was from the fact that the instrument was often shown hanging from the claws of the eagle, Aquila, also imagined in its stars. And in Greece, it was Cathara, the ancient formix, the first stringed instrument of the Greek bards, and Ara, or Ar, and Ora Catafers, the and Ora Cato fears the pendant lyre. Ovid mentioned its seven strings as equaling the number of the Pleiades. Ovid mentioned its seven strings as equaling the number of the Pleiades. Longfellow confirming this number in his Occultation of Orion with its celestial keys, its cords of air, its frets of fire. The Samians, great Aeolian, A-E-O-L-I-A-N, the Samians, great Aeolian lyre, rising through all its sevenfold bars from earth unto the fixed stars. Holy cow. So this references Pleiades directly into Lyra. It's an emanation and a mirror of Pleiades, I feel, unto the fixed stars from the earth unto the fixed stars. And reflecting back, I feel... I entered that part, but that, like the feeling part, how I feel, it's like a reflection of the Pleiades and then back to earth. Still, it has been shown with but six and a vacant space for the seventh, which is so weird because in my daughter's crayons, the one space is missing. So still, it has been shown with but six and a vacant space for the seventh, which Spence in the Polymetus referred to the lost Pleiad like Pleiades, it's spelled the same way, P-L-E-I-A-D, the lost Pleiad. Manilius seems to have made two distinct constellations of this, Lyra and Fides, although we do not know their boundaries, and the subject is somewhat confused in, in his allusions to it. The Persian Hafiz called it the Lyre of Zura, oh my gosh, and his countryman translated Cathara by San Jerumi, the Arabians turning this into al Sanj, from which Hyde and others derived Assange, a Sanger, Assanges, Asangu, Sangu, and Misangu, all titles for Lyra in Europe centuries ago. But Assemini thought that Tlias were from Shikard's Azango, a, a symbol, Kimball. The page 282 reproduced Alphonsine's tables of 1863 to 67 give Alsanja, while Sanj was again turned into Arnig and Esnig in the translation of Rudinand's commentary and in the still more unlikely Brinek, as has been explained by Adler. In Bohemia, our Lyra was Hosliki Na Nabi the fiddle in the sky, but the Teutons known it as Harafa and the Anglo-Saxons as Hirp. Hirp, which sounds like harp, right? Which Fortunas, which Fortunatas of the sixth century, the poet bishop of Poitiers, called the barbarians Harpa. Wow. With the early Britons, it was Talon Arthur. That hero's harp. Novidius said that it was King David's harp, but Julius Schiller that it was the manger of the infant savior. Precep Salvatoris. Oh my God. It was known as the fiddle in the sky, Barian's Harper, Harpa. And with the early Britons, it was Talon Arthur, that hero's harp. Novidinus said it was King David's harp, but Julius Schiller, that it was the manger of the infant savior. Precep Salvatoris. Oh my God. Th this changes like so much, you guys. This makes so much sense why I've been receiving this message. Like, you guys get it. <laughs> okay, I don't... Jigum has been wrongly applied to it from the Zugan yoke. 
yoke is huge, of Homer, but this was for the yoke or crossbar of the instrument with no reference to the constellation, which Homer probably did not know. Still, the equivalent Zugama was in frequent use for it by Hippocar Hipp Hipparchos, Hipparchos. Sundry other fancied figures have been current for these stars. Acosta mentioned them as Eurachile, the party colored ram in charge of the heavenly flocks of the ancient Peruvians. Abegala and Albegalo occur with Bayer and Ricoli, Riccioli, like the Arabic Albagal, a mule, although their appropriateness is not obvious, and Nasser al Din wrote of Alpha Epsilon and Zeta collectively. Among the common people of Persia, this was the Kutro Prus or Greek tripod. Greek tripod, Kirsten! The tripod thing you sent me. And the Antifaya of the nomad Arabs. Tripod is huge because that's like the, the triage, the 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 thing that you sent me as well, Heidi, um, and that's missing the fire, right? And um, the the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. Shirka, also attributed to Nasser al-Din, was by some scribe's error for Hazaf, figured in this location on the Dresden globe as a circular vessel with a flat bottom and two handles. But on the Borgian, it is a scroll, commonly known according to Asimani as Rabesco. Ooh, I want to learn more about that. The association of Lyra's stars with a bird perhaps originated from a conception of the figure current for millenniums in ancient India, that of an eagle or vulture, and an Acadia of the great storm bird Arakaga. Arakaga. Before this was there, identified with Corvus, but the Arab's title, Ain Surawaki, Chilmiad's Alvaka, Referring to the swooping stone eagle of the desert generally has been attributed to the configuration of the group Alpha, Epsilon, Zeta, which shows the bird with half-closed wings in contrast to al Nasser Altair, the flying eagle, are Aquila, whose smaller stars, Beta and Gamma, on either side of Alpha, Alpha, again Janet, indicate the outspread wings. Scaliger cited the un synonymous al Nasir Asikit, from which came the Nusrakat of Bayer and Nusrakito of Asimani. Al Safi, alone of extant Arabic authors, called it Al Iwaz, the goose. Oh my god, Janet, the goose that laid the golden egg, guys. Okay. So, see how this etymology is so deep and like. I need to read it like this because it's it's activating me as well. Like I'm connecting so many puzzle pieces through reading this. And I'm sorry, this is a lot of information and I'm not the best at speaking some of these words, but it's connecting dots, major dots. Aquila Marina. Do you guys remember when I got the word marine in my twin flame reading? There's something huge... Not only with that, I, I discovered it's actually one of my friend's names. <laughs> so this is so cool. Chris Sikoka wrote of it as Kathaminos, the sitting vulture, and it has been Aquila Marina, okay, Marine, Aquila Marina, the osprey, and Falco Civitris, the wood falcon. This is so hard to say, you guys. Page 283. Its common title two centuries ago was Aquila Cadens, or Vulture Cadens, the swooping vulture, popularly translated the following the falling gripe, and figured with upturning head bearing a lyre in its beak. Barch's map has the outline of a lyre on the front of an eagle or vulture. Aratos called it Kilis Olige, the little tortoise or shell, thus going back to the legendary origin of the instrument from the empty covering of the creature cast upon the shore with its dried tendons stretched across it. Lowell thus described its discovery and use by Hermes here. So there it lay through wet and dry, as empty as the last new sonnet, till by and by came Mercury, and having mused upon it. Why here, cried he, the things of things in shape, material, and dimension. Give it but strings, and lo, it sings, a wonderful invention. Holy shit, you guys. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay, I'm such a dork. Okay. 
The equivalent, the equivalent Latin word chalice does not seem to have been often applied to the constellation, but the occasional adjectival titles Luturia, Mud Inhabiting, and Marina were and are appropriate, while Testudo has been known from classical times. Horace thus, allu Horace thus alluded to it. Dicas Phoebe et de Dibus Supremae Grati Testudos Jovis Alaborum Dulci Lenemen. The poet, doubtless, having in mind the current story that the tortoise lyre was placed in the sky near Hercules for the alleviation of his toil. The Alphensine illustration is of a turtle, Galapago, and the original Spanish, which Cisius turned into the indefinite Baloo. Balua, Cassius turned into the indefinite Balua aquatica, and La Lande into mus and musculus, musculus, like muscles, musculus, some marine creature, not the little rodent. Wow, Balua reminds me of Beluga. Do you guys remember Beluga the whale? It just reminded me of that as well. Um, other names were Testa, the creature's upper shell, and Popula, which, by a roundabout process of continued blundering, explained by Eideler, was derived from Testa. Reminds me of Tesla as well. Testa, or as it seems more likely, from Aquila. Bayer's Bassanos is probably a mistranslation of Testa that also signified a test. And Smith said that another Testudo was at one time proposed as a constellation title for some of the outside stars of Cetus between the ladder's tail and the cord of Pisces. You guys, this is connecting all the freaking constellations together. This one constellation. Smith said that another Testudo was at one time proposed as a constellation title for some of the outside stars of Cetus between the ladder's tail and the cord of Pisces. When the influence of Greek astronomy made itself felt in Arabia, many of the foregoing designations or adaptations thereof became current. Among them, Nablon from Nabla or Nablion from Phoetian, from the Phoetian harp, Allura, which degenerated into Allure, Allure, Alohar, Alchoro, etc. found on page 284 in the Alphacene tables and other bygone lists. Shaliak and Salafat Words for the tortoise, Gamalira, is Salafat. Ulug begs translator, having the former as Shaliak, which Piazzi repeated in his catalog Salabak, which heads Kazuin's chapter on the lyre. Idler tracing these Arabic words to Kiles, they were turned into Elzalef and Zulaika in the original Alphacene tables and Shailif in Chilmiad's treatise, treaties. The Almagest of 1515. Oh my God. Okay, Janet, we have the Almagest of 1515. 1515 here, you guys, Isis, okay, combines all these figures for Lyra stars in its allure. It es voter cadens, it es testudo, while that of 1551 says Lyra testudo. So that must be French, because that sounds French to me, doesn't it? Mm. Um, I can't believe it says 1515 right there. That's significant. And while that of 1551, 1551, so we have 1515 and 1551. 1551 is a palindrome and 1515 looks like the word, the name Isis. Uh, this is insane. Okay. So these are all, this is activating me. Um, and I'll have to literally wind this down and abbreviate so much of this like because this is so long okay but notwithstanding the singularly diverse conceptions as to its character the name generally has been lyra and the figure so shown roman coins still in existence bear it thus as does one from delos apollo's birthplace in the cicalades and silician money silician Money had the same design with the head of Aratos on the obverse. The laden manuscript has the conventional instrument with sidebars of splendid horns is issuing from the tortoise shell base. The Venetian hyaginus of 1488 with a similar figure calls it Lura as well as Lyra, but the drawing of Hevelius shows an instrument which neither in ancient nor in modern times ever had existence. 
Durer's illustration, as well as others, places it with the base towards the north. And Lyra is on the western edge of the Milky Way next to Hercules with the neck of Cygnus on the east and contains 48 stars according to Argeliander, 69 according to Heist. This location is noted as one of the various regions of concentration of stars with banded spectra, Secchi's third type, showing a stage of development probably in advance of that of our sun. And from near its kappa, five degrees southwest of Vega, or Vega, radiate the swiftly moving Lyrids, the meteors, which are at their maximum of the appearance on the 19th and 20th of April, which is my daughter's birthday, the 20th of April, which is today, <laughs> which when I'm recording this, but visible in lesser degree from the 5th of that month to the 10th of May, and these have been identified as followers of the Comet 1 of 1861. Okay, the train's going. Divine emphasis from spirit. Azure Lyra, like a woman's eye, burning with a soft blue luster. By Willis, the scholar of the Bitten Coret. Star names, their lore and meaning. Richard H. Allen, 1889. Wow. So that's the end of the article. There's so much here. I'm sorry that I read so much, but it's amazing. And it connects so many dots for me. And I think it'll activate a lot for you as well. I love you guys. Um, I'm going to include this either with the reading or this will be like one of the first parts of the reading. But I wanted to get the information out first to activate you before pulling cards to see what we get then further on. Because a lot of the things I receive are before I receive the information and then they help connect the dots and then they help me with the readings of the starseed readings to really get you the full rounded effect of not only the lore of the mythology um, and what it pertains, but also with the reading itself and the messages that come through that and how it connects through that as well to further activate you. So this is so exciting and I love you guys. And this is an amazing article. You can find this on constellationofworlds.com um, is I believe what this is. Yeah, constellationofworlds.com. Um, and this is absolutely amazing. It's exploring the etymology and symbolism of the constellations. So uh, I feel like there's more. I do. I feel like there's more in reference to the mirror aspect, um, which I'll be researching more. And yeah, this is amazing. I love you guys.